What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Back with my segment, Ego, the Rumor Mill, because I want to talk about rumors. Let's get it in. Now, people have varying views on PBC and Al Heyman. Some people love him. Some people hate what he's doing. And a lot of the detractors, a lot of people that hate Al Heyman, it's all based on tribalism or because their favorite promoter is this person and, and things like that. But one thing that can't be denied is Al Heyman is very powerful in the sport of boxing. And he has so much power and such a vast stable to the point where even the people, let's say Pauli Malignaggi versus Danny Garcia, is that the best possible fight that could have been made? No, but it's a realistic one because Danny Garcia was just moving up to welterweight first fight, right? And they both have an East Coast fan base. So it was an easy fight to make. They made it not the best. Keith Thurman Colazzo, not the best. Khan versus Algeria. But the thing is, some of those fights that were perceived mismatches, like Khan Algieri, I myself said, I was like, nah, I don't want it. That, that's going to be whack. I thought it was going to be one-sided beatdown via Khan, and it turned out to be a competitive fight. So that's one thing. But more importantly is, people sleep on this. Al Heyman has so much power that he can drop the bomb, Hiroshima, at any given moment. And that's what I want to talk about in this announcement. He's trying to put together Sean Porter versus Keith Thurman. That is the rumor, and that's an excellent fight. And they're trying to try to make it on the Adrian Berner versus Alec Verdiev card or possibly Danny Garcia versus Robert the Ghost Guerrero. None of these fights are confirmed except for Broner's fight, Guerrero versus Garcia. I could talk about that in another video if you want. But I'm really interested in Porter and Thurman. I hope this does come together because this is a meaningful welterweight fight with two young fighters, one once beaten and the other undefeated. And the Porters know Keith Thurman very well from the amateurs, but it's all business inside of that ring. And I really like the fight. Like I said, I'm always about meaningful fights, and we need to help shape the division. And in my opinion, whoever were to win this fight, even if they had to walk through hell to win, based on the level of competition, they would stand a strong chance to possibly get a 50th fight if Floyd decides to come back after his Berto fight, if he wins that fight and he doesn't actually retire. To me, if you look at everybody's audition tape, their fight right before Mayweather was making his decision, so this year, you look at it and you can break it down. Sean Porter, he did pretty good. Broner made it an ugly fight. Sean Porter looked a bit sloppy. Nonetheless, he was winning all the rounds. And then he got dropped for the first time in his career in the 12th round. People remember stuff like that. Keith Thurman, he was boxing good, but then a guy he said was over the hill, if you guys remember December 2014 when Amir Khan was fighting Devin Alexander, Keith Thurman was fighting Leonard Bundu on the undercard. And in that interview, like a pre-fight interview, he says, I don't respect Amir Khan at welterweight because he fought, he ain't beat nobody. He fought over the hill Colazzo. Fast forward to the future, Keith Thurman fought Colazzo and Khan did better. And Keith Thurman got drastically hurt. It looked like he was going to get stopped or knocked out in the fifth round. People remember that. Then you look at Amir Khan. He fought what most people, including myself, thought was like an easy one-sided fight. Chris Algieri coming off a six-knockdown embarrassing loss to Manny Pacquiao. Coming up in weight, brand new trainer, first fight with him. People thought, oh, Algieri has no shot. Algieri made it competitive. He was in Khan's chest, hurt Khan. He actually rocked him a bit and made it competitive. So that was the audition tape. For all of these welterweights who are screaming they want the Mayweather fight. And to me, none of them really shined. None of them. In comparison to, you look historically, Victor Ortiz fought an undefeated Andre Berto and had a fight of the year where they both knocked each other down and Victor Ortiz clearly won that fight. So who had a fight like that? Canelo beat an, a slick style southpaw in Austin Trout, who a lot of people thought would be too good of a boxer. He was undefeated too. Trout was undefeated. And they thought Trout would be too much, too slick for Canelo, who they thought was more of a brawler or whatever the situation. Canelo knocks him down and beats him. Only thing I had a problem with was the open scoring, but you can't take away from Canelo. You look at Shane Mosley. He was the underdog. People said, oh, Margarito's going to blast him. And then he ended up stopping a granite chin Antonio Margarito. Ricky Hatton, undefeated. You look at Broner, got tore up by Maidana. Then Maidana got the fight. Plus, Maidana was on had knocked out three other people before the Broner fight. And that was their buildup. So what I'm saying to you is Thurman versus Porter is that type of a big fight that I think would get enough spotlight that could catapult the winner into 
a Mayweather shot. I think that there's enough eyes on that type of fight that would be interested in that particular type of fight. That's what I'm saying to you. Because so far, when you're struggling a bit with Algieri, given his situation off loss, coming up in weight, no power, new trainer, you're, you're struggling a bit in that round with Luis Colazzo, who has been beat several times, and Khan recently beat and beat more thoroughly than Keith Thurman, the guy with the menacing power. You know what I mean? When you get knocked down by Broner, who's a 140-pounder, had been fighting at 140, never really looked great. You know, you notice Broner didn't knock down nobody else at at 147. He didn't knock down Pauli Malignaggi. He didn't knock down Maidana. But at the catchweight, he knocked down Sean Porter. So to me, none of them really just shined in their audition for Floyd. And he ended up picking Burdo. But Sean Porter versus Keith Thurman, that's a whole nother animal. I think that is the type of fight where people would be watching. It'd be on prime time. And if Floyd decides to come back for a 50th fight, maybe not fight a Pacquiao, that is a, a likely option, I would say. I would say that's the type of uh, fight that could catapult the winner into a Mayweather 50th fight. That's just my honest opinion. And even if, if Mayweather stays retired, it's a good fight for your resume. You could say... Hey, I'm Sean Porter, and I beat Keith Thurman, and I beat Adrian Broner. You know what I mean? If you're Keith Thurman, you could be like, I beat Sean Porter, Diego Chavez, Robert Grail. Who else won it? You know what I'm saying? Good fight. Really good fight. Hopefully, it does happen on PBC. These are the types of fights that the fans want, and there shouldn't really be any complaints. Free TV is not going to be pay-per-view. Really nothing to complain about. Hopefully, it gets made. I will keep you guys advised and updated if it does happen, but Porter versus Thurman is an awesome fight. Two friends, two youthful guys, two strong guys, and two guys with the willpower to to keep pressing forward and and win despite any adversity. So I would love this fight. Let me know what you guys think. Who wins, Porter versus Thurman? Make sure you drop me those comments. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is ego signing off.